Okay, it's day 81 of this yellow onion germination experiment. So as you can see, the foliage pretty much looks the same. It looks a little taller. I would estimate that this is, you know, 22, 23 centimeters long at the max. And the bulb looks nice yellow. It's still kind of the same. We got maybe rings of dried out algae at the top. It's no big deal. And there's big droplets of condensation. So we know this system is still working. I rinsed out these bottles really well last time with hot water. There's still probably residual mold spores, but you know what environment doesn't have those? So let's take a look at the inside. So sad to say there's still a lot of molding fruiting bodies emerging from this root system and you know, that's pretty disgusting right there. So seems there's no real easy way to get rid of this stuff you know I don't know what I can do have this face the sun you know make a reflector to kind of have these moisturized yet um, kind of under the sun all the time you know maybe that could help um, you know what I did last time it helped somewhat but not really completely so that's a bad sign because there's just not that many healthy roots right now. So um, I'll think about this and see what I want to do. So this other bulb has leaves that are straightening out. I would say you know, it's about 7 centimeters tall. Maybe 8 if you unfolded those uh, tips. Everything else looks sort of okay from the shoot system up. Okay, so this other bulb has a root system that's much, much cleaner. Um, that just means the systemic rot, the fungi, has penetrated very deep into, you know, this dried peel root cluster in bulb number one. Bulb number two, however, looks not bad at all. You know, there's still a little bit of mold. Uh, you can see this gray fuzziness. It's really hard for uh, me to remove stuff that deep. I'm going to try another hydrogen peroxide treatment. It doesn't seem to have done anything to the roots in this case. And also on bulb number one. You know, I'm looking at bulb number one here, and it looks like this could be two independent plants. Uh, I'm not sure how this will work. But, you know, it's sort of like the sweet potato. And then you have uh, multiple trunks coming out of the same tuber, so to speak. So this has two easily observable ones here. Here's more of that hydrogen peroxide solution. So there's more airspace in this bulb now. Um, just has an onion smell, you know, the water doesn't smell bad or anything, but I mean, look at all that mold. You can hear the fizzing immediately. Maybe this thing just needs more treatments. Alright, I'm going to put it back. Um, you now I might rinse out these water jugs again, although I don't think that's the problem anyway. I don't think, uh, you know, the mold is coming from the bottle. It's just systemic at this point. You know, buried within layers of dead tissue. So uh, this is bowl number two. Make sure everything gets thoroughly soaked. So if anything, I just have hopes for this bowl because it looks so healthy. Uh, so far, there's a little bit of mold, you know, in that stuff. But, um, you know, none of this is really intentional or my fault because these just sat in the refrigerator for two months and 
you know, I didn't clean them. If I wanted to just do this as a purposeful experiment, I would have just basically bought two fresh onions and washed them off real good before I started the experiment. So one final thing I'd like to say is I stopped using plastic wrap to seal these holes. I don't think it's made any difference in terms of my uh, overall condensation scheme. There's still plenty of condensation, so I'm assuming that the roots are getting the water that they need for the time being. I know I don't have any nutrients like this, but um, this is all just temporary. I'll figure out what I want to do later on. It's day 83 of this yellow onion germination experiment. So the foliage just keeps on growing. The shoot systems are becoming more and more robust, but let's see what happened with the root systems. So this is bulb number one, and this is still a very ugly picture. There's a lot of mold there. Um, there's just mold everywhere. You know, it's not as bad as before, and we do have some healthy roots, but you can see mold on some of these as well. So this is really tough. You know, I don't know what the correct call is. Should I destroy most of this onion, you know, just peeling away and peeling away, or should I just keep treating with hydrogen peroxide and seeing if things get better? And this is bulb two. So that looks a lot healthier. If any bulb makes it, it's gonna be this one, but the shoot system in bulb one is so robust now, I can't help but think that it's gonna make it no matter what. Um, but yeah, that's just based on feeling, and these roots will keep growing to reach down for water, um, but they're so far away. Um, but I think my system is good enough to keep these things growing for the time being. I know there's no nutrients being provided like this, but I wanted to make sure everything was mold free before I started engaging in any hydroponics or burying any of these bulbs. So this is the setup for bulb 2. As you can see there's still a lot of condensation. Um, the system is basically working, you know. Especially at night I imagine there should be a lot of condensation on those roots and it should be absorbed immediately. But you know there are these gaps here so it's not a situation where the roots are, are exposed to 100% humidity with no gaseous exchange. So before I start ripping stuff up on the root system and trying to cleanse it once more, here's the shoot system of bulb number one. It's just very robust, very, very long now. So if we look at bulb number two, it's a uh, soft underneath. There's a lot of air space now to the touch. Um, it's using a lot of nutrients in there. But that bulb is way bigger than bulb number one. And I peeled away some layers here, but you know, that's got air space too. So there, it's just a continuous process of the nutrients and the layers being used up. So hopefully bulb number one can withstand some more layer peeling and cleansing so I can get rid of the mold problem before we start growing these things in earnest. This is essentially the third treatment. I removed a bunch of more tissue and you know there was a lot of mold and I dug down a little deeper there was like just like little plates of mold against this and I kind of rubbed them away so I'm hoping you know the problem will be solved but um yeah, I got rid of a lot of tissue again. So I hope this bulb can survive. It seems like this is the root ball and there's a lot of mold trapped in there. So essentially I have to keep rinsing this thing with hydrogen peroxide and hoping that that solves the problem. I can't just remove all of this. I can only remove the layers around and clean the gray slime. All right, so I'm gonna pour on some more hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so we have a lot of fizzing again, and you know, the parts that were wounded or exposed or burned. So I hope that solves the problem. I'm not too optimistic that it will. Uh, we may require additional treatments, but at least bulb number two looks like it's well on its way to being independent. 
and mold free. All right, so here's bowl number two. It doesn't look like there's all that much to remove. Um, you know, I don't see any nasty mold fruiting structures, uh, grayness everywhere, but you know what? I'm just gonna pour some more hydrogen peroxide on this root ball, just in case. All right, so I've used up almost all my hydrogen peroxide, but this stuff is cheap. It's not even, it's not even a dollar per bottle. So that looks good to go. I'll just put it back. And at the very least, bowl number two is gonna have a long and fruitful life. I'm not so sure about bowl number one. Okay, it's day 85 of this yellow onion germination experiment. So the foliage is quite long, I would say definitely beyond 25 centimeters. So the mold problem here is relatively solved. Um, well, there's still some mold inside this root ball and there's not much I can really do about it that deep. Let's see. Now the remaining roots look pretty healthy. If you look at this angle, you can still see some mold. Um, not sure how much I can do about that. I can keep washing with hydrogen peroxide, but... So here's a spot that I thought was vulnerable to mold last time. It was kind of bruised, um, but not really bruised, you know. It was just probably because the mold had penetrated another layer or two deep. So it keeps coming out with these uh, fruiting bodies to generate more spores. So I'm gonna have to carve that away with a knife or something and uh, keep spraying more hydrogen peroxide. So before I do that, this root is interesting because it came out of one of the layers. So all of these layers, if they're not molded over, are live and very productive. Bowl number two now has a lot of loose air space in the top of it. You know, it's all wrinkly. Basically, if I push that, it'll sink in. Regarding the foliage, I think there are three shoot systems. Maybe even four. Yeah, I think four is a better description. You know, there's one, two, three, and four here. So I think that's what's going on, you know. Um, these are bulbs and it wouldn't make as much sense just to produce one plant from each one. Um, I'm hoping this is actually four plants in the making. So just by a vegetative cloning of itself, I would assume that this would want to make at least a lot more than just one plant. I think my hydrogen peroxide strategy has really paid off. I don't see mold anywhere here. And this root ball looks pretty healthy. You know, I think there's some I think there's some mold on the dried out parts here in the root ball, but there's not much I can do without cutting this whole bottom off and hoping roots regenerate. And that would just set everything back by, you know, ages. So I don't want to do that. And I think this is almost ready. I'll give it one last hydrogen peroxide treatment just to be safe. So from the looks of it, bulb one has two shoot systems and bulb two has four. So the way I'm counting bulb two as having four shoot systems is these three leaves plus that um, little leaf coming out there. That's probably one and much like with scallions or green onions, you have these uh, kind of patterns that wrap around one entire shoot system. So that's another one, that's two. And that's three right there. And I think these leaves, one, two, three, four, 
plus anything in between coming out is another one. So if I'm looking at these two bulbs, you know, why would one have two shoot systems and the other have four? It's because I think this bulb just has a lot more biomass, bulb two. It hasn't suffered from an infection. Um, this one, I peeled away so many layers early on to combat this mold infection. And, you know, it's grown a lot and that could be another difference too. You know, if there's only two shoot systems to support it's a lot easier to grow them taller you know it's kind of like that one joshua tree i posted a video of that has the you know tallest height ever well it only has one main trunk whereas the other joshua trees are multi-trunked so if this has four systems to support that requires a lot more energy so they can't um, withdraw as much energy and resources from this bulb as a percentage compared to the two shoot systems um, getting half of the resources from this bulb each. Um, regarding the leaves being thin and hollow, you know, I think that's true just by touch. Pressing on this and it gives very easily. So I think that's one of these uh, features that makes this plant unique and um, you know, usually when you see succulents like aloes and whatnot in desert conditions, I mean, they're solid all the way through and they have, you know, a lot of rich juices inside. And this seems to be just kind of thin and uh, hollow in the inside. And I can't figure out what that adaptation is for, but I definitely enjoy seeing these leaves and, uh, you know, um, feeling their texture. It's just really different from other plants. Bulb number two looks pretty good here, but I'm gonna go ahead and disinfect it anyway. This is the fourth hydrogen peroxide cleaning slash onion surgery. So there's a lot of fizzing going on right now and that's plenty of hydrogen peroxide. It should, you know, kill some more of that fungi. I don't think I'm ever gonna get rid of everything, but you know, I can't see any signs of deep infection anymore, so. I think what we see is what we get, you know, on the surface, essentially. I mean, there's some dead mass here inside um, all those dried out peels, essentially, flanking the roots. Um, and the roots go right through them. And there's really nothing we can do about that. So I think this is ready for some hydroponics action. Now, bowl number one is okay in most of the other areas I disinfected last time but you know it's got this soft spot that I was worried about last time I should have acted on my instincts and carved that away I hope I don't need to use a knife I can just use my finger um, so this is going to be pretty gross as usual okay so that actually doesn't look too bad you know underneath um, looks like I don't have to dig very deep I'll throw that piece away uh, kind of rinse off my fingers. I know that's not going to help a lot because there's just still a lot of mold spores probably left on my fingers, on my gloved fingers. But uh, rip that chunk away. Yeah, that looks pretty good, and I can smell the fresh onion smell inside. Yeah, well, that's pretty good actually. So what I'm amazed at is how onion one. You know, it doesn't smell anywhere as near as bad as Onion 2 did in the very beginning, and I just don't get that. Uh, onion 2 just smelled like a giant onion fart, so to speak. So, you know, I don't really know what's the best way to do this. I mean, it's just a lot of uh, hard work and perseverance, I guess. But I can remove some more of these layers and, you know, hope for the best. That's kind of, it looks kind of, you know, wet, which doesn't make sense because these are hydrophobic onion layers. You know, I'm just going to cut into that spot and remove potential dead stuff. Um, wow, this is getting pretty deep in the onion. So it's like all white in there. And let's see. move a little more in this direction. You know, this bruise 
It appears a little soft. I think I should dig into that. Here it's kind of pitted and dried out really hard. I don't think it's a good idea to do that, but um, you know, we're gonna go ahead and take that away. Okay, so we have this layer here. I don't think it penetrated the mold. And remove this chunk in between. Okay, so we're starting to get into stuff that looks more vegetative. You know, it's kind of green inside. I hope I'm not damaging too much of this uh, potential growth in the shoot system or the root system. There's still some mold on this root ball. You know, there's it's just a tough, not a woody mass down there, but it's it's pretty tough. So all I'm gonna do at this point is just pour hydrogen peroxide you know, kind of cauterize the wound, so to speak, even though this isn't with fire. It's just sort of a chemical burning that will occur at any injured spots. Right away, you can see a burn right there. It's actually kind of a fun chemical to play with because it, of all the fizzing it causes. I mean, it's just like mildly caustic. So yeah, I used basically half a bottle here and I think that's enough. Just a whole lot of fizzing and I'll leave that on there because as I've demonstrated over the past two times, it doesn't hurt. So for now, I'm just going to wash these bottles again with hot water and, you know, it's just straight hot water from the tap. This is a self-distilling system and with hydroponics, I'm not too concerned, um, you know, as opposed to with growing things in soil, I don't want to keep adding, you know, hard San Diego tap water and mineralizing the soil, salinating it. So that's a key difference there.